In this video, we're going to understand how to create a USDC payment experience where a user can deposit USDC into their wallet and send USDC out of the wallet to another address on the Polygon testnet blockchain. This sample apps is restricted to the testnet environment, but you can use mainnet account in your own application. And this experience will be a gasless payment experience. And that means that the user won't have to pay any gas fees of any sort. This will be covered by Seku for the user. The user will be presented with the ability to create their account by setting a pin code and adding a recovery question in case they forget this pin that they've set. I, my name is Blessing Adesiji, and I'm a senior developer advocate at Seco. In previous videos, we examined and we talked about how Seco's Web3 services can power great use cases such as cross-border payment, dollar access, crypto capital markets, and other emerging use cases. Check the link in the description to revisit. To this point, we've provided a sample application, which we call the user-controlled wallet sample application. If you are not familiar, user-controlled wallets are a type of programmable wallet that lets users have full control over their wallet. And this is the foundation of creating a payment experience for your users. Your users have a wallet that they can use to make payments in USDC with the user-controlled wallet. And this sample apps comes in two GitHub repository, which you can clone and run on your local machine. This showcases the integration of Circle's Web3 services product, the Web SDK, smart contract account, user-controlled wallet, and gasless transactions. You can download and easily run and configure it for your own existing web application so that you can provide wallets to your end users and thus create a delightful payment and user experience. And while you are cloning the repository, don't forget to give us a star on that repository. Let me show you the demo of the application and let's talk about how the application works. So on my screen right now, I have the URL where you can see the user controlled wallet sample application and it's been deployed. So here I will log in. If you don't have an account, if this is your first time, you can use this button to sign up and get yourself an account. So I've created my own account. Let me log that in. So my account, I've signed in. And you can see right here, I've got USDC and I've got Amoy Matic, which is the testnet Polygon Matic uh, token. So you can see that this is the button to deposit funds and this is the button to send out funds. We are going to try them out. And this is the wallet address. You can easily use this button to copy the wallet address and you can also monitor the activity right here. So you can deposit any funds into this by getting maybe from a faucet and depositing funds into that. Because I have funds here, I'll just show you how to send out to another address. So I can simply grab another address from my existing transaction, which I got from the activity bar. And I can simply just copy this address because I sent one USDC previously to this address. I can easily reproduce that activity again. So I'll send it out. I'll send USDC. I'll click USDC and I'll pop in the address right here. And then I'll impute the amount that I want to send. So I could just say two USDC. So we're sending two USDC from this wallet to this other wallet. So I'll click next and that will show me this final information, the network and the estimated gas fees. And this will be paid by Seco because he's using the gas station feature to sponsor this activity. And it's using the smart contract account that lets you, the developer, sponsor the gas fees on behalf of the users. So I'll send that and... The final stage is to impute my PIN. So I've set some PIN code. In case I don't have access to it again, I can click this button to reset it using my recovery questions. So I have my PIN code and I've sent to USDC from this wallet address to this other wallet. We can confirm it so you don't take my word for it. So let's go to my developer console and this, I'll monitor the transaction. This is the transaction we just did to USDC and it's even in a confirmed state. So we need to wait for it to get to a complete state. And that's when the user would finally receive the USDC or the token in their account. I'll refresh this and we can come back and monitor, okay, it's still in the confirmed state, but once you open this, you see the transaction hash, you see the wallet address. This is the wallet address for this sample application. You can see the first few digits and you can see that's it that we have right here. And this is the wallet address for this particular wallet that we sent to USDC to. So that's how this sample application works. And we're going to talk about the repository now. 
So before we move ahead to take a look at the repository, let's review the architecture of the SDK that makes everything possible. There's a diagram on the screen right now, and it shows the design of the SDK infrastructure. Understanding this will help you understand how the repository or the application works powered by the SDK. The first step, as you can see in the diagram, involves a user performing a request within the user controlled wallet on the developer's web application platform. For example, a user initiates a USDC transfer to an external wallet, which we saw when we did that. And take note that this wallet can be any address. It doesn't have to be the one created in the application. It could be any address so long as it's the same as the blockchain address. Then the developer requests a user's transaction through Circus Programmable Wallet APIs, and the Circus API returns a response containing a challenge ID. The challenge ID must be completed to execute the requested transaction. And that was what we did with the input pin code. And the developer passes the challenge ID to the Programmable Wallet SDK, prompting the user to impute their pin code to complete this challenge. And you saw that. The user completes the challenge by entering their PIN code and encrypted inputs is delivered to the Circus SDK APIs. And now Circus delivers a callback notification to the developer through a get endpoint or developer querying this for a particular given transaction to show the status update of the requested information. And finally, upon completion of this request, the developer can then notify the end user within the web application that the transfer or the transaction has been completed. Now, let's talk about the repository. Like I said, we have two repositories. We have the front end and we have the back end. So starting with the front end repository, which you can find at this URL as shown. And when you click on that, when you open it up, you see a readme where you have the prerequisites configuration steps, how to get started, and the architecture that I just explained. The code structure of this application uses Next.js, which is a React framework, and Joy UI as the React component library. To save us some time, let's review the main logic that interacts with the Circus Web3 Services Web SDK. It initializes and authenticates the web SDK client for the entire application's use. You can find this logic in the client-side component the app forward slash component. And when we navigate to the provider directory and select the Web3 provider, we're going to see this block of code. Let's talk about the block of code. At the start of the code, you will notice that there's an app ID that is retrieved from the environment variables. And if you are curious how to get your app ID, simply navigate to the developer console and in there you find the app ID under the user controlled wallet section and the configurator. After this, the code defines a context interface with a single property client, which is either an instance of the Web3 SDK or undefined. To explain the provider component, which is a React functional component that provides the context to its children component and then manages the state for the Web SDK client using the React use state hook. And this uses a use session to get authentication session data. Then we have a use effect hook for setting the resources. If the client is defined, it sets the font resources for the client. If the SDK has not been initialized, we need to do that. So we have a use effect hook for initializing the Web3 SDK because we need to wait for the client side pages to render so that our SDK has access to the HTML window property that displays the pin model. This initializes the Web3 client if it hasn't already been created. And this sets the application specific settings using set app settings. And after which we define an unforgot pin and ladder makes an HTTP post request to restore the user's pin code and execute a challenge with the received challenge ID. So when the session or clients are updated, we need to re-authenticate the web SDK by providing the client with the user's token and encryption sourced from the session. And this code that is showing on the screen right now does that. Then the provider component returns a context provider, which is W3 context provider that wraps its children, providing them access to the Web3 SDK client through the context. We need a custom hook to simplify the process of accessing the Web3 context in other components. And this is what the last block of code is doing. So everything I just talked about is the main logic that sets up the Web SDK. It creates a context and provider for managing and using an instance of the Web3 services SDK. 
The provider ensures that the SDK client side is only initialized once and sets up necessary configurations and authentication. It also provides a way for Nexted components to access this W3 SDK client through the context. It's also worth learning about how to connect the front end to the back end server and how to use the web SDK clients to do just that. So let's take a look at this code piece when we try to create a transaction to send tokens. On button click, we send a post request to our backend server using Axios and React query, which simplifies data fetching and state management, as you can see on the code. We will then receive a challenge ID in the response. Sending token is an operation related to assets, so we'd want to authenticate it with the web SDK client. We will use the web SDK client to execute the challenge ID, and the users will be prompted to input the pin code that they've set, then a transaction will be created. So this is how everything works. We talked about the front end, and then we looked at how it connects to the back end. This is the time to take a look at the back end repository. For the back end repository, we're going to take a look at two files. We're going to talk about the user controlled wallet SDK, and the user controlled wallet SDK initializes the user controlled wallet SDK. And then the SRC controllers transaction file is the second file that we're going to talk about. And this contains code on how to use the user controlled wallet SDK to create transactions. Please understand that there are two different SDKs. We have the web SDK and the server side SDK. The web SDK powers the front end and the server side SDK powers the server side. So the code in the user controlled wallet SDK files initializes the server side SDK client with configurations sourced from the environment variables. It uses .env to load environment variables from an env file and then defines a circle API based URL using circle API based URL from environment variables and also calls the default endpoint. So let's take a look at transactions. If you navigate back to the controller folder and then you check the transaction file, you find the logic that is used to manage the transactions. Let's quickly talk about it. This code defines several ExpressJS route handlers that interact with the user controlled wallet server side SDK. These handlers facilitate interaction with the SQL API for transaction management and related operations. They are designed to handle requests, invoke the appropriate SDK method, and send back to the response or handle errors as needed. Let's take a look at this example. We're going to talk about the list transaction handlers, which list transactions for authenticated users by making a call to the user controlled list transaction method endpoint using the server side SDK to do that. So, and then it sends the response data with a 200 status code and finally catches and forwards the errors to the next middleware. We have more handlers handling transaction functionality and they are create transaction handler to create transactions. We've got get transactions to get transaction, validate address to validate the address of the wallet and estimate transfer fee to estimate the gas transfer fees. And we saw how all this thing works when I showed you the demo earlier on. Uh, the same ExpressJS handlers configurations goes for the users, wallets and tokens functionality. In our developer documentation, we have every information that you need to understand every method and API endpoints that you need to build your application. And there you have it. In this video, we showed you how to use a sample application to create a USDC payment experience with the user controlled wallet, which is a type of Circus programmable wallet. We also did a quick walkthrough of the repository that powers the same application. And the aim is for you to use it to understand how user controlled wallet would work in a reward application. To join our Discord server, you find a QR code on the screen which you can scan and then be able to ask questions and understand how everything works. My name is Blessing and it was wonderful taking you through this application.